President Trump is calling uh, Robert Mueller's testimony on Capitol Hill a disaster. The former special counsel appeared before two congressional committees, testifying for more than six hours. Mueller mainly stuck to the script laid out in his written report. He focused on the ongoing threat of Russian interference ahead of the 2020 election, and he maintained his investigation does not exonerate the president, despite what Mr. Trump has said. Paula Reed has more from the White House. So we had a very good day today. President Trump seemed pleased with the Mueller hearing. When you ask that question, you're untruthful. But quickly turned defensive when CBS News mentioned one of Mueller's few definitive statements. Mueller said you could be charged once you leave no, office. No, didn't say that. Again, yes, you're fake news and you're no. right at the top of the list also. Let me just tell you. That is what he Go said. Go back sir. to what it's he not said what he sir. said. That is what Read he said. Read his correction. That was not Read his correction. His correction. His correction. The president's claim that he couldn't be charged was wrong. Mueller did not correct this statement. Could you charge the president with a crime after he left office? Yes. You believe that he committed, you could charge the president of the United States with obstruction of justice after he left office? Yes. President Trump believes Mueller's testimony may even help him get reelected. The Democrats thought they could win an election like this. I think they hurt themselves very badly for 2020. Still, the hearing appeared to have gotten under the president's skin. I think Robert Mueller did a horrible job, both today and with respect to the investigation. Though he's had a different take in the past. It was the most thorough investigation probably in the history of our country. CBS News has learned the president happily made calls to his friends after the hearing. This case is closed. The president's lawyer, Jay Sekulow, previewed the White House's argument going forward. The, the reality is that the, at the end of this, the needle has not been moved in favor of any kind of action by the, the House Democrats here. So joining us now from the White House is Paula Reed, And here with us on set is CBSN political contributor and Democratic strategist, strategist Antoine uh, Seawright. And also, you are also the CEO of Blueprint Strategies and a senior advisor to the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee whole lot of words there, as well as CBSN political contributor Molly Hooper. So we're going to start with you, uh, Paula. So the president singing his favorite refrain, complete exoneration and other greatest hits. Uh, what does the testimony mean to the president and the White House? Well, it was unusual after hours of testimony about how Russia interfered in a U.S. election for the president to come out and declare that it was a great day. In many ways, he appeared to be putting party over country by saying this was great for me and the Republicans, even though Robert Mueller made it clear that this was one of the most distressing things, that one of the greatest challenges he had seen in his storied career. Now, White House officials confirm Russia continues to meddle in U.S. elections. They're really focusing on social media campaigns to sow discord among Americans, particularly on controversial issues like race and guns. This was just last week. I spoke with a senior administration official who said even though the administration has told Russia to knock it off, they continue to do this. So going forward, the administration must confront what they are going to do to try to successfully deter Russia from continuing this activity. You know, Paula, before we get to our in-studio guests, I just want to ask you another question here because it strikes me uh, that what we heard yesterday from Robert Mueller, three things jumped out at me. The report does not exonerate the president of the United States. Russia is continuing its activities to meddle in our elections. Um, and several members of the president's campaign have gone to jail for actions taken before the election, and several members of the Trump administration actively sought to do business with Russia, which many believe could lead to undue influence by the Russians uh, to this country. So it's n I don't understand how Republicans and the president can actually celebrate something like this. Well, two things. Yes, uh, six of the president's associates or advisors have been charged. Five of them have been convicted in the course of this investigation. Well, one thing Republicans can take away from yesterday's hearing is they were, to a large extent, able to, to share and amplify a lot of unsubstantiated claims about the origins of the Russia investigation without much pushback from the special counsel. So they were, up to, they were able to bring up George Papadopoulos or the Steele dossier and just make whatever allegations they wanted to undermine the credibility of this investigation without Mueller really pushing back very much. That is concerning because at the end of the day, what you want voters to truly be focused on is the fact that the one definitive conclusion that the special counsel had was, yes, Russia did meddle in our election. He laid out exactly how they did it. He confirmed that they did it in an effort to help 
a candidate Trump become President Trump. He even confirmed that the campaign used used what Russia was doing to help craft uh, their communication strategy. He did not find that there was a formal conspiracy, of course, but he even said, Robert Mueller testified, he is concerned that this kind of coordination with a foreign government could become the new normal. Certainly not something for anyone of any party to celebrate. You know, Antoine, as we were moving closer and closer to the testimony, there was it seemed like the Democrats were sort of tamping down expectations, and they kept on sort of reinforcing this idea that even if he just reads the report, that'll be good enough because most Americans haven't read the report, and hearing it, hearing the words from his mouth will make a difference. He didn't even read from the report, really. He referenced it, but he didn't read from it. Well, he wasn't asked to, and what I said coming into this mm. is this should have been framed as a national security argument because you did say that. time yeah. at the time we saw throughout the hearing this was a national security Security argument. The other so thing, you think it was a misstep then to sort of characterize it, this as bolstering the impeachment argument? I don't think it was a misstep because mm -hmm. you only had some hollering impeachment. Leadership uh, has been very clear, mm -hmm. Pelosi, Corey, and Clyburn, that we need this in order to make the case for continuing to investigate and flush out the corruption that flows from this administration. For Democrats, it was hope for the best, prepare for the worst, capitalize on what comes. Well, what has come is there were pinpoint examples that you can touch where obstruction of justice came to. We know that the president lied in his written testimony to the special prosecutor. We also know that we've set a dangerous precedent if we don't do something about accepting dirt from a foreign government who essentially is our enemy who committed an act of cyber warfare. And now with all the conversations we're having now about race uh, and all the things we're having, it seems to me like this could be an alley-oop from Trump to the Russians to do the same thing they did in 2016, and we all let it go by and say, oh, well, there's nothing wrong with this. And that's the scary part, because make no mistake, they are not stopping. And, and through all this, the argument has been they meddle into our elections. Not one time have you heard the president say, we need to do something about mm. meddling in the elections. And as you said earlier, Vlad, the fact of the matter is this report does not exonerate the president. So Molly, it, let me ask you this. Republicans largely focus on the origins and the integrity of the report, mm. as well as Robert Mueller's credibility. I just want, again, this is objectively speaking, <laughs> this man is a war hero. He was wounded in action in Vietnam War, chose to serve yeah. uh, his country as the United States Marine, saved his Marine buddies. Yeah in battle, led this country in our worst period of modern times after 9-11, confirmed by the Senate, 98 to nothing, mm -hmm. unprecedented to ask him to serve again as FBI mm -hmm. director, and you've got these Republicans yelling at him, screaming at him about his credibility. Was that a good strategy? Well, I, well I'm not sure if it was a good strategy, but I think that what they were trying to do was get to the credibility of the team around Mueller. And this is one thing that I did hear from one of those Republicans who was up on the up on the dais, who, who knows Mueller, who said, you know, when, when Bob Mueller was putting the team together, he, he, number one, he had to take on several of the attorneys who had already been working on the investigation in the FBI, full stop, and that's what he said. The other thing is, uh, he brought on close associates that he's worked with in the past, like, like Andrew Weissman and these other individuals, and he wasn't thinking about politics. He says he's never had to he's in his entire to, career exactly. in and politics in DC. He's never asked somebody who'd you vote for. Well, exactly. And that's why that's why, you know, early on in this investigation, when revelations came out that these other attorneys had been donating money to the Democratic National Convention to the Democratic National Committee, um, had attended Hillary Clinton's victory rally, et cetera, so forth, uh, some Republicans said, Bob Mueller's a stand up guy. But he doesn't have the right team in order to, well, in order for Republicans to take seriously the report that comes out. And it's not going to be Bob Mueller. It's going to be the people around him. And what Republicans tried to do, and I'm not sure that they did it effectively or not, depending on how you look at it, is make that case that it was the team around Mueller that they didn't trust and not Mueller himself. But, but can I pick up on that last point on national security? One thing that I did find very interesting in the second hearing yesterday at the Intel Committee, a Republican, Will Hurd, actually asked Bob Mueller, moving forward, what's your recommendation? How do, how do we counter this, these, mm -hmm. this, this disinformation? What, which organization takes control of that? And he didn't really have an answer, and that that was that was kind of a, a, a moment, a meaningful point, because as Republicans and Democrats try to 
you know, bolster election security. They just need to know how. Mm -hmm. What's the most effective so, way? So, so a couple of things. Number one, there's a bill sitting in Mitch McConnell's Senate that Democrats have passed out of the House that have not seen the light of day. Number two, Will Hurd is battleground zero for House mm -hmm. Democrats in, uh, in going into next year's election. Uh, number three, Republicans from day one have tried to do everything they can or could to tamper down or pour water on this fire known as Robert Mueller. So there's no secret uh, why they did what they did yesterday. But uh, in case you haven't figured out, you, these people who serve in our government, who are underpaid and overworked, we don't care what their politics are when they leave home. We should not care. Mm -hmm. And we've never had to care before, but this is just one line of excuse the Republicans want to use to damage the credibility of this investigation. And we cannot go down this dangerous road because I am quite certain there are people who work in this administration and every other administration we've had in this country who may not, their politics may not be in line with the people who are in charge of the government. I think it's supposed to be normal. It is this, uh, it's it's normal. public service. It's right. Who you vote for and how much money you make should never be public service. fellow Americans, right. not to help exactly. my particular well, but, the challenge, you work for. but the challenge we have, and this is covering Congress every day, it's hyper-partisan, yeah. hyper it's so true. And it's, it's so just, true. Listen, know, I want to bring uh, Paula back in. P uh, Paula, yeah, Mueller alluded to investigations that remain open. You spoke to former FBI Deputy Director Andrew McCabe about that. I want to play some of that sound from your interview. I was surprised that he revealed the fact that there was a uh, significant element from the counterintelligence division at FBI who were essentially embedded with the special counsel team and there for the purpose of exchanging counterintelligence information in both directions. It certainly makes sense that that team would continue to investigate any lingering counterintelligence concerns around the president or anyone in his administration. So that was one of the revelations that we didn't know about that came out of uh, the hearing. Should the White House, is the White House concerned about this? The president's legal team insists it's case closed on the entire Russia investigation. But as you said, this was one of the big reveals for Mueller yesterday that there are continuing ongoing counterintelligence investigations. So these are investigators looking at the national security threat, not looking at the possibility specifically of criminal charges, but looking at the extent to which Russia continues to meddle anyone who could potentially be susceptible to blackmail. The White House would really like to get out from under the cloud uh, this investigation that has loomed over this White House for pretty much the entire time the president has been in office. But it was clear from the fact that there are still these ongoing counterintelligence investigations. And as you saw in the CBS This Morning story, the president could be charged once he leaves office. And that was something that was clearly very agitating uh, to him, the prospect that this will continue to loom over him, not only during his next two to six years in office, but also once he leaves. He could potentially be charged with obstruction crimes. There are also questions about whether he is culpable in the campaign finance violations. His former personal attorney testified to. His personal attorney also suggested possible tax fraud uh, and, and bank fraud. So there, there's a lot of legal issues uh, that the president could potentially face consequences for once he leaves office and overall that is very frustrating to the White House because they believe it's very difficult for them to really amplify their accomplishments or to even get things done in the first place. But the president still insists he can turn this all into a win and try to convince voters he is being harassed. Hmm. Antoine, you wanted to add something real quick? Yeah, yesterday brought very much clarity to why you see the House majority controlled by Democrats investigating committee after committee all the corruption that stems from this uh, administration. And make no mistakes, Democrats have never uh, put their strategy, put all their eggs into this basket. We've made it clear that issues like we drew up in the midterms are be, will be the thing that keep us in the majority and that will take back that temporary public housing unit called the White House. So for the Republicans who want to frame this argument that it's a loss of Democrats, I would tell you stay tuned. All right, Antoine, Molly, thank you very much. Paula Reed at the White House. Paula, your uh, question to the president uh, led many evening news broadcasts yesterday uh, and has a lot of people buzzing. Uh, thank you for that original reporting and asking those tough questions. We appreciate it. Thank you.